Let's talk about fetal monitoring with your patients in labor. So when your patient comes into the uh, labor room or they have their water broken or even anytime you do actually a, fiddle, a, fiddle, a fetal assessment, we're going to put two monitors on your mother, on your mom patient. One measures the contractions. The other one measures the fetal heart rate or what's called fetal heart tones. Now we have a few different classifications that shows if the fetal heart rate is good, if it might be a little bit too fast, if it's okay but monitoring, if it's bradycardic and severely bradycardic or too low is the next one. So let's go into which is which. So for reassuring, the excels last for 15 beats per minute over 15 seconds in duration. All that means is that, say we have a baseline of 140, we're going up, 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 and then we drop down slow. And it's up, 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 up. But for 15 beats over 15 seconds. Same thing as our stress test. If you guys remember your reactive stress test. Two accelerations is just fancy words for your baby's moving, so the heart rate's going up. If you and I move, we're running, our heart rate is going to go up. If your baby is moving, their heart rate should go up too. So that's reassuring. For elevated heart rate here, the next one's elevated. What if it's too fast? Way too fast. How do you know? Well, for elevated heart rate, this is our tachycardic babies. The baseline is above 160. There's inadequate blood supply and could be affected from either drugs, like uh, our cocaine patients or substance abuse users. It could be induced by um, medication, or it could even be induced by uh, infection. So, if you guys remember any type of outside stress or sepsis, fancy words for it, uh, infection, could make our baby have an elevated heart rate. So above 160 is considered our elevated heart rate. Now if it comes back down to 140 and stays in baseline, that's good. But we're talking about a baseline that is at 160. So when we do accelerate, it might even go to the 180s or even 200s. So that's what we're talking about in terms of elevated. Think baseline is elevated. Uh, let's see here. So they'll probably do actually an amniocentesis, or they can probably even sample, um, take a look at the mom, see if the mom has an infection anywhere else in the body. Usually it's infection, though. Early D cells. Early D cells should mirror the contraction. Anytime your patient has a contraction, the mom has an increased squeeze in the uterus. The baby's heart rate will automatically mimic by going down. Because a squeeze, when you have a contraction, the uterus is trying to push the baby out. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to dilate the door, cervix, to 10 centimeters. The uterus is trying to push the baby out, and all this pressure on the uterus is being pushed on the baby inside that amniotic fluid sac. And the placenta now becomes a little stressed. So the baby's heart rate will go down, but it should turn to baseline with contractions. This is good. Early D cells are good. It's good to be early, right? Okay, good. It's bad to be late. Late D cells are the worst. And we're going to talk about this because your fetal heart rate should return to baseline after the contraction, just like this. Should be baseline after the contraction. When the baby's heart rate doesn't return to normal after the contraction, should actually look like this. Oops. Darn it. My pen's not working. But it'll look like this. It's going down like a fluttering uh, little bird. And it'll go down almost like staircase. 
Now, this indicates that there might be a insufficient placenta, possibly placenta previa. There's something wrong with the placenta itself uh, that's giving oxygen to the baby and helping the baby live. There could be decreased uterine blood flow to the baby. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to reoxygenate, give oxygen to the mom. So hopefully this translates into the baby through the umbilical cord. So we're going to turn mom on her side. Always, always the key nursing interventions in OBGYN. They're very kind of simple. We're going to turn mom on her side, on the left side. We're going to take pressure off of that heart, off of those vena cavas that's trying to get uh, the blood back to the heart, to the lungs. So we're gonna take the baby off to the side, take pressure off that heart, give mom oxygen, about six liters, um, and we can lower the head of the bed, keep the head of the bed low, and have mom lay on her side. This is gonna help reperfuse the uterus, hopefully clear up our late D cells. If that doesn't work, and if we have too many late D cells, we're talking deoxygenated baby. Deoxygenated baby, remember O2 is the money of the bate. So we're gonna have to do a C section because too many late D cells means too little oxygen. Too little oxygen means you're dead. You are going to die. And same thing with your heart, heart attack patients. Too little oxygen to the heart, you have necrosis of the heart. Your heart is dead. So we want to save baby. We want to make a happy baby. So we're going to do a C-section and take the baby out and hopefully uh, resuscitate the baby from there. So that's for our fetal monitoring.